The last example I want to take a look at is called the logistic growth curve. I referred to this a little bit earlier. Uh, if I have exponential growth, in, just in the first quadrant, that would look something like this. This is something that's growing without bound. Well, for most populations, at some point in time, that's going to become unrealistic because your population needs some food and there's only going to be a finite amount of food in the world. And so at some point, you're going to start competing for resources. So a logistic growth curve has a formula that looks something like this. Y is equal to some, A, B, and C here are just positive constants. So Y is some positive constant over 1 plus A, another positive constant, E to the negative BT. A little bit more complicated formula, but it's kind of neat to see what the curve does. If I look at it initially, it looks like an exponential growth curve initially. And then at some point, instead of continuing to curve up getting steeper, it still continues to go up, but it starts to curve so that it's getting less steep instead, and then approaches some horizontal asymptote. With populations, that's generally going to be called the carrying capacity. That would be the maximum size population that the environment can support support. Okay, so what I want to do is just look at this curve and see if we can figure out a couple of things, sorry, look at this formula, see if we can figure out a couple of things from the curve from this. First of all, let's figure out what the initial value is, and then I want to see if we can determine the height of the asymptote. Okay. So for the initial value, that would be just what we got if we plugged in 0 for t. Well, if I plug in 0 for t, I'm going to get y equals c over 1 plus a e to the 0. That's just going to be c over 1 plus a. So my y-intercept here would be 0 comma c over 1 plus a. Okay. But now I'm kind of curious about this asymptote. And can we figure that out? That's the sort of thing you do a lot in calculus because it's describing the end behavior. So I know this would be describing what happens as t goes to infinity, what's y going to? Now if I look at this formula, if t is going to infinity, this exponential piece right here is going to go to zero. Because remember, b we said was positive. So, as t goes to infinity, negative b times t is going to be going off towards negative infinity. It's going to be becoming big and negative. But what happens to my exponential function, y equals just e to the t, when the exponent goes to negative infinity, it approaches 0. So, this piece is going to be going to 0 that's going to kill off this second term on the bottom. So y is going to be approaching c over 1, which is just c. For a population, we would call that, the again, the carrying capacity. Uh, for In general, for a logistic curve, because it can be used for things other than populations, it's also called the limiting value. Just as a quick example, um, I took an even-numbered problem from your text, so this was problem 74, I'm sorry, 34. S of t was 72 over 1 plus 9e e to the negative 0.36t. Okay, excellent. And what this is representing is the sales S is standing for sales as a function of time after you initially launch a product. Now, it makes some sense that we might see a curve that had that same basic shape. Initially, this is really popular and new, so the growth in sales is big, looking like exponential growth. At some point, some of the excitement of the new product might wear off, and some of the people who were most excited have already bought the product, so they're not going to be buying it again. Um, and so the sales are still increasing as people are buying more stuff, but they start to level up. The rate at which it's increasing starts to decrease. And the limiting value 
would basically be the maximum amount we would expect there to be in sales. I mean, if I'm selling um, whiteboard markers, I'm not going to expect that I can sell an infinite amount of whiteboard markers because there's going to be a finite demand. Okay, so that limiting value would be the total amount that I would expect to be able to sell. Okay, all right. And so with this problem, I think we were asked to find, yeah, S of zero and the limiting value. Okay, so S of zero would be what I get when I plug in zero for T. So that would be 72 over one plus nine E to the zero. That's 72 over one plus nine. That's 72 over 10, or 7.2. Okay. And the limiting value, rather than just memorizing what part of the formula it is, remember that that's describing what happens as t goes to infinity. Well, as t goes to infinity, this term is going to be going to 0. So the limiting value is just going to be 72 over 1, or 72. We won't be doing a whole lot with these curves, but it's nice to see them, to see that we can adjust for reality and say populations don't just always grow forever and ever and ever. And for those of you who do go all the way to differential equations, it's really neat. Even though this is a kind of complicated formula, we can actually derive a formula like that um, in differential equations by making just a few assumptions and just following and seeing where they go. So it's kind of neat. Uh, right now you're just sort of seeing what the curve looks like and getting used to it a little bit. But if you do go to differential equations, you'll be able to come up with a formula like that based on just a little bit of initial data. I should mention, there is one other topic in the book that we are not covering, and that's regression. Now what regression is, is it's essentially curve fitting. So you get some data, you would have a table of values, and you plot those points. And if I plot some points and they look like that, I might say, you know what, that looks kind of like an exponential growth curve. And so then you would try to find the exponential function whose graph best matches the data that you have. Really cool concept, really tedious to do by hand, and it's generally done with technology. So if you want to read about it in the book, you're certainly more than welcome to. But basically, the book is assuming that you have access to a programmable calculator, and I'm not requiring that for this class. So we're not going to be covering that. You're not responsible for it. But if you find it interesting, you're more than welcome to read up on it.